Welcome to the Vault Excel. This is live number two. Thank you so much. Please check out the earlier live pertaining to Danishka uh, Mieha, a very brutal crime that took place here in Knoxville, Tennessee by Latuan Osborne and uh, two other suspects. And also his mother was also arrested for accessory after the fact and tampering with evidence. The other part of that live is pertaining to the two women who were missing out of Kansas later, uh, believed to be found in uh, Kansas, waiting on confirmation for that information. A lot of he said, she said, and cultism activity between them and some group they uh, are part of called God's Misfits. Please check out that earlier live. Let's get down to business, everybody. Live number two, Lord have mercy, hot off the press. It has been 30 something years since this crime took place of Lorena Bobbitt unaliving her then husband's penis. And luckily, by the grace of God, it was found, imagine that, and it was sewn back on, reattached. We're going to talk about all that nonsense. We're also going to talk about the porn film that he did. And yes, the queen saw it. Don't ask. <laughs> One of my young friends at the time, uh, a male, a uh, gay male at that, he had a copy of the movie. I guess he rented it or had it, however it works. And he showed it to me many moons, moons ago when we were in our 20s. And I was stunned because, you know, I'd never seen uh, activities between men. And uh, he had uh, shown me this tape of him in a porn situation. Not, excuse me, let me say this again. I'd never seen, I'm putting my foot in my mouth. Anyway, I'm <laughs> moving too fast. A young man that I knew of, uh, we went to school together. He just so happened to be a, a gay man. At that time, finally came out the closet. Anywho, he showed me the film, and it was of Mr. Bobbitt in sexual relations with a woman. Let me make sure I make that clear so nobody else say it was gay porn. But anywho, sorry about that. But what is baffling to me about this case, he wants an apology from Lorena. I believe she's moved on. Somebody else, she has a different last name. Why do you now want the apology, an apology, 30-something years later. I'm confused. Why now? Is his functioning part, or excuse me, is his part, I'm moving too fast, is his anatomy not working? He's mad, he's looking at it, he's angry, it's not functioning as it should be, it doesn't look attractive anymore. So he's now looking and thinking and rehearsing what happened that night to where his Yahoo Wahoo got cut off. So now he wants an apology. Will she give an apology? Will she respond? We're gonna go back in time to her uh, conversations about why she did what she did. And then we're gonna go back in time to an interview he did with ABC News, where he talks about what led up to the event. Was he violent with her? Was he abusive to her mentally, physically, sexually? What happened with these two? Why did she unalive his penis? I don't know, but let me read you the latest from The Sun. Dear God, help me. Oh, Lordy, Lordy, Lordy. John Wayne Bobby wants to finally put an end to one of the most, as it says, acrimonious marriage splits of all time with an apology. It's been over 30 years since John Wayne's ex-wife, Lorena, uh, Lorena, I don't like the word they use. Just we'll just say unalived is private part. As their stormy marriage exploded in a fit of bloody rage. Okay, right now. Okay, these are pictures of her, I guess, in court when she was sobbing. Oh Lord, hold on. Now it's not coming up. I don't know what's going on here. I don't really like information from the Sun and the other that other newspaper because I don't think they tell the truth about stuff. Well, it looks like his feet have been amputated as well. What about that? Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me. This is some crazy nonsense here. Let's look at these photographs here. This is this is bizarre. There he is. He doesn't have any toes. What happened? What is going on here? Is he diabetical? Because the only reason I can see that he doesn't have any feet is if he had poor circulation, some type of diabetical 
issue to where his toes had to be amputated because that's usually how it starts. When you have poor circulation, they have to amputate your toes, then your feet. God forbid later, they have to amputate your legs. Is he diabetical? Is he angry, perhaps? He has health problems and he's just wanting some attention and want this woman to say, hey, I've got health problems now. I've got problems with my woo-ha. i got problems with no having no toes. Could be, hey, time for them to take off his legs. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with this man. I don't know what problems he has, but let, let's, let's, let's dive into this nonsense. Lord have mercy. Okay. Happier times with the couple. I'll just leave this up here because I'm going to have to keep folding this up. Court. Let's take a dive, everybody. The shocking incident in June of 1993 made headlines all over the world. The couple who were married for four years both went through court cases that laid bare the violence and lack of trust in their relationship. Lorena maintained her ex-Marine husband subjected her to domestic abuse and rape charges, which the now the 57-year-old was cleared of being hit with a marital sex charge. So this is very interesting information because it's been a long time since I've talked or heard anything about these people. So she accused him of abuse and sexual assault, charges which the now 57-year-old was cleared of after being hit with a marital sex charge. It's very wicked here. Venezuela Lorena's malicious wounding trial ended with her sent to a mental institution for 45 days after the court concluded she was temporarily insane, which led her to mutilate John Wayne while he slept. The recriminations have flown back and forth ever since. Lorena said she was assaulted that night, uh, sexually assaulted that night. She took a knife to her husband's groin while John Wayne in an exclusive sit down with the U.S. Sun claims he was on the verge of leaving her after two months of the silent treatment. It was also insinuated that the brutal act was born out of pure anger and a lack of trust. John Wayne has tried to get his life back together, moving to sunny Florida to be closer to family and friends. Yet he's now lost all his toes after allegedly falling victim to the water poisoning scandal at Army Base Camp Lejeune in North Carolina, where he was stationed in the late 80s. So not diabetes, but some type of water poisoning scandal. So what happened with at the base uh, at Camp Lejeune? This is very weird. He has been suffering from toxic peripheral polyneuropathy, which has caused in, irreparable nerve damage in his feet and caused serious neurological issues. Well, Queen will have to do a little research on that. He is hoping for a sizable payout, especially after President Joe Biden signed off a $1 billion compensation claim in 2022. The bitterness of his divorce from Lorena, however, remains. And when asked by the U.S. son about what he would say to his first wife, who had since remarried and has a child in Virginia, John Wayne becomes engulfed with emotion. I would hope she would speak up and admit she made a mistake, he said with a tremor in his voice. We could have worked it out and had a family. Wow. He says the truth will come out, yet he knows he was also to blame. He recalls petty arguments about Christmas trees and crucially lying about where he had been on the night of his manhood being severed in a blood-stained bed. So, uh, sir, while you're rehashing your life with Lorraine, I don't know what the hell's going on with you. Uh, sorry about your toes, but... Were you cheating on her? Were you abusive to her? Did you sexually assault her? You said you got the silent treatment for her from her for months, and this is why you were going to leave her. Okay, so just so happened you're going to leave her, and then she cuts off your woo-ha. I'm wondering if there's some truth to her allegations. Because now all of a sudden we're hearing, and I don't, I didn't follow your content a long time ago to see what you said and didn't say. So I want to know, a long time ago, did you say you made a mistake, you had problems, you didn't tell the truth about where you were that night? So let's start with that. Where were you that night? Were you out all night, sir? Did she have evidence that you were cheating, sir? Were you cheating, sir? If you were cheating, with whom and how many women were you cheating with? Just asking. Do you feel like she should not have done what she did to you, sir? Do you feel like she should have done prison time, sir? I got a feeling you still care for her, sir. 30-something years later. You know why? 
because one, you want an apology, and two, you sit here saying we could have had a family. So I think you regret however you treated her. You regret she cut off your part. You regret looking at it, seeing it the way it looked. You regret not being faithful to her, perhaps. Maybe she was the one true love that got away and you didn't treat her well. And you have regrets, sir. And that's what this is all about. You regret that she moved on with somebody else and had a kid. I don't know if she's happy, not happy. It's, it's not really, it doesn't matter at this point because this is what happens in life. People move on and they don't go back. They don't look back, whether it was a tragedy or not. They keep moving forward. So now we got to ask the question, Miss Lorena, do you regret cutting off his penis? Should you apologize, not apologize? Will you apologize for cutting off his woo -ha? And are you happy in your life now with your family? Are you happy? Damn. What a mess. Once again, petty arguments about Christmas trees and crucially lying about where he had been on the night of his manhood. So obviously you're admitting that you lied to her. If you say crucially lied, unless the son is souping this article up. There were bust ups with some of John Wayne's family with claims Lorena kicked out his brother and wife in the middle of the night after a disagreement following a day at the amusement park and forcing them to drive back to Delaware. Lorena, did you do that? Kick out the family, his brother, wife? Why? Why did you do that if this is true? What was this argument over? Are you, were you known to be emotional at that time? You, did you get upset easily? Did you assume the worst of your husband, assume the worst of his family? Did you feel like they were taking his side? What the hell am I talking about? I don't know. He also believes that with Lorena's U.S. citizenship heading to its final 12 months, the uncertainty played a factor in their dispute. So now we got to ask that. Did you marry her to give her citizenship? Ma'am, did you marry him to get citizenship? Wow, we're learning a whole lot of new stuff right now. Okay, however, John Wang fears he fanned the flames of Lorena's controlling behavior by applying to work at the door of a nearby nightclub. This only fueled her suspicions of affairs with other women. Okay, so were you picking up women while on the job, sir? Did you take that job deliberately to make her jealous? Did you apply for this job deliberately to make her jealous? Or you wanted to be in the slew of women and be around women? What is the truth? I don't know. I'm just repeating what the hell is saying. Quote, unquote, why couldn't she have waited until the morning to talk to me? Why did she do it? <laughs> Come again? Well, maybe you need to ask Lorena why she did it. Hell, you didn't ask her that when you went to court. Lorena, why did you cut my woo -ha off? Lorena, why did you cut his woo -ha off? Do you regret cutting the woo -ha off? Sir, are you regretting that perhaps it doesn't work well now that you're older? I don't know. Because I think that's what's going on here. You still miss Lorena. You miss the way your woo-ha used to look and probably doesn't work as good as it did. I don't know. I know it was working in that porn video you did. Shut your mouth, Queen. But anywho, you've lost your toes due to some water contamination at uh, Camp Lejeune. You have a lot going on, sir. Lord have mercy. And I don't wish no amputation of nobody part, foot, arm, woo-woo, or nothing. But damn. And then I got to look at that. Who else from Camp Lejeune got their toes and legs missing? I'm just saying. Or are you the only one? I don't know. I don't know anything about this contamination from Camp Lejeune. So then I got to ask that. Well, if you got your feet missing, who else, as I said, got their toes and feet missing? Any women? Any children? Anybody else? Anybody else out there missing any toes and feet from Camp Lejeune contaminated water? Please, call the queen. Reach out to me. Because I've never heard of anything about this. Lord have mercy. This story is... <laughs> Golly, I can't. Woo, let me continue. Ex-military. How did they meet? I'm, I'm curious to that. How did they meet? All right, everybody. Let me finish this, this nonsense. Okay, I lost my place because this article keeps jumping off. That's usually a sign they don't want to be on. Hold on. Oh, Lori. I don't even know where I was. This is what happens when you're talking about nonsense. <laughs> Hello, Charlotte. 
I've lost my place. Once again, just recapping, he's trying to get a lump sum of money from this uh, this amputation uh, of his feet due to this water contamination at Camp Lejeune. Uh, Lorena has moved on. She has a child living in Virginia. He wants to know, uh, you know, he says he hopes she would speak up and admit she made a mistake. He says we could have worked it out and had a family. John Wayne says Lorena's silent treatment was never mentioned in her trial and admits to making a series of errors of judgment, some of which he puts down to cognitive issues caused by drinking the toxic polluted waters at Camp Lejeune. Is he just using this as an excuse? I don't know. He says, once again, the truth will come out, yet he knows he was also to blame. So he, he gives blames. So he's talking about Christmas trees and different arguments, allegations of putting um, his uh, brother out with that wife uh, due to some type of disagreement. Uh, he said he kicked the brother and wife out in the middle of the night after a disagreement following a day at an amusement park, forcing them to drive back to Delaware. I don't know what that's about. He also believes that with Lorena's U.S. citizenship heading in its final 12 months, it played a factor in their dispute. So why would you all be arguing about that? I don't understand. But also, uh, he believes that uh, he fanned the flames of Lorena's, Lorena's controlling behavior by applying to work at a nightclub. Three days before the attack, he claims to have told her about plans to divorce. Lorena, however according to John Wayne, became very upset and begged him to reconsider, claiming her faith taught her never to believe in divorce. In between, a local girl had given him a bicycle and invited him to a party which uh, strengthened Lorena's fears about infidelity before she grabbed a kitchen knife and bludgeoned herself into American folklore. So what really was the catalyst that drove this woman to cut off his private parts. Were they arguing that night? Had he not come home? Was he out running around? Did he come in late? Was he with some other woman? Or was he at this job working at a nightclub? What day of the week was it? What was really going on? I, I don't know. John and Wayne was stitched back together and the pair attempted to carry on with their lives despite the watching, watching the world continuing to grimace at the grisly outcome. So. What are you saying? That after they sold it back on, you two were still living in the same house? This, this is bizarre to me. It wasn't easy for either, yet the man who will always be known for having his manhood saved by cops who found his severed member by the side of the road and quickly placed it in a hot dog box packed full of ice has no regrets. She was a really good woman. We could have had a great life together, John Wayne, who said the pair had split for a year in the middle of their troubled trace. Trice continued. Things got difficult, though. She didn't want anyone around me. She was jealous. So was Lorena jealous of John Wayne Bobbitt? He's convinced. Hold on one second. OK, hold on. Oh, we were just trying to punish each other, he added. So did he realize he had a jealous wife? And then he would just do stuff to aggravate her, upset her? Did he talk about other women? Did he flirt with other women in front of her? Uh, did she withhold sex from him, affection? This made him more angry. Maybe this led him to go out and have sex with other women. I don't know. So are we going to hear that you had sex with other women? Were you messing around with other women before you noticed tendencies from her? Did you notice she was jealous when you first met her? Were you a jealous person? I don't know. I, I'm just asking all the questions. He's convinced manicurist Lorena's boss, Jana Busutti, helped create a false narrative, which didn't tell the whole story about their tempestuous relationship. It haunts me, John Wayne said. Yet other problems contributed to their downfall. We just didn't have a support system, he said. We had no one around us who cared and was able to help us through any difficulties. So why do you need other people to help you? Because in the end, we've learned about that. Meddling people, telling people your business. It's an old adage that you really shouldn't tell people that you're having marital problems. Because then people will take it upon themselves to get involved. And then that causes friction. And now you got people arguing with relatives, friends, associates, uh, employees, bosses. 
and things can get out of control when people start jumping in. Then the people start falling out with the person who told them this because now they're staying with the person and they're like, well, why you keep running to me telling me your damn problems? And my daddy once told me that. Don't tell me nothing about what a man's doing to you if you're going to stay. Because what if I decide to do something to him? Exactly. This is why it's not good to tell people your problems. Because most times when people complain about a person, their spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, they rarely leave. And now this person is sitting here watching you be miserable. And you have to admit, at some point, you're not going to be able to keep going to that person complaining about your problems because they're not going to want to hear it. Because they're going to say, well, why do you keep coming to me? You're unhappy and you're staying in the relationship. So you, you do need to consider that when you're talking about your personal problems with people. So once again, he said other problems were their downfall. What were, what were, what were those, sir? Sorry, I'm getting tongue-tied, everybody. We just didn't have a support system. And like I said, is he making excuses? Because now you're talking about somebody she was friends with, boss, whomever, false narratives. Now you're blaming that you didn't have a support system. You're saying you could have worked it out, could have had a family. You also take blame as well. You, you are admitting to taking that job as a bouncer, whatever, that helped aid the fuel... Maybe there's more to the story that you're not really telling us, Mr. Bobbitt. I think you have regrets. And this happens in life. People realize they have mistreated people and still, day for day, they're beating themselves up because they know what they did to the person, whether there was violence or not, whether the person acted out in violence toward them, and they realize they've lost a good thing and they are miserable as fuck. And I know somebody like that. They're no longer alive. My uncle was like that. He cheated on his wife. And then she finally divorced him, and he never fully moved on from that divorce. Although he married the mistress, but he still always talked about the first wife, always asked about her. Have you seen her? What she's doing? How's her kids? How's the grandkids? Blah, blah, blah. And one would look at him and be like, damn, do you still are you still in love with your first wife? Because you knew you fucked up. And I would say this for my uncle. He's not alive. And the wife now, she's not alive either. She passed away recently. Uh, you can't go back. This is why you should treat people accordingly when you're in their presence. So you don't have to live with regrets. And I think that's what's going on here with John Wayne. But can anyone be excused for taking a knife to the neither regions? Yes, I could forgive her, John Wayne said. The attack affected me differently because I was a Marine and trained for combat. I knew when they were able to put it back on, I would be okay because I had healed pretty good. But why couldn't she have waited until the morning to talk to me? Why did she do it? She's still saying I'm a monster, but I just want my name back. I want closure. Very interesting information. He wants closure. He wants his name back. So basically you're saying, sir, you want the name and the image that you had before the world knew about her taking off, her cutting off your Wahoo, Yahoo, and then you all became a household name, storyline, jokes. But that's what happens in life, sir. That's why I said what I just said. If you treat people accordingly, you don't have to worry about having these kinds of problems. It's not to say that you would never have had bad luck in life. It's not to say you wouldn't have had these toes amputated down the road. But you wouldn't be John Bobbitt known for having his Wahoo cut off. You also wouldn't be known as that same guy who did a porn film after that. That's bizarre to me. Because allegedly this took place in 93. Well, I'm watching a porn, uh, you in a porn movie in 94. So within less than a year, you've already made a porn movie with your newly attached, reattached private part. So to me, I'd look back on that saying, this doesn't sound like somebody that's so wrapped up and worried about Lorena and what she did and didn't do an apology. Who goes and makes a porn movie? Who becomes a porn actor after getting their Wahoo reattached? See, I believe you wanted to prove your manhood even then. Oh, let me go make this movie to show people it still works. Because here, you're basically saying, you know, once they reattached it, you knew you would be fine. How would you know you would be fine? 
You mean when you saw that it was still working or it could get erect or party erect? So I'm asking that question. Did it get erect? I mean, it's been a while since I saw that video of you in there having sex with women with your reattached woo-woo, but it was strange when I saw it because it didn't have a little bump in it, and that's naturally from where they sewed it back on. You're very lucky that one, they found it. Two, that it could even possibly work. Okay? This is just bizarre to me. Absolutely bizarre information. Because it's time for you to move on. And I think, as I just said, you did mistreat her. She probably was a jealous woman. But then the flip side could be you were doing things to make her jealous. I don't know. I don't know her. I pray that she's in a better place now. Uh, she and God has worked out what she did to you. And it is what it is. But I don't know that she's going to give you an apology because maybe she still believes that you're a monster. Maybe she still believes you're the same type of person. I don't know. I find it interesting that you haven't moved on and found you another mate. Have you been dating? Have you tried to date? Have you tried to be a better person? Do you think that you're a better person, Mr. John Wayne Bobbitt? See, those are the things you need to ask yourself before asking this woman for an apology. What you're supposed to be saying to yourself, I don't have any hatred towards her. I hope she's repented to God and I've moved on. But you haven't. See, that's the gist of this story. You haven't moved on because I believe you knew you didn't treat her well. You did not treat Lorena well. And you know you can't go back and fix it. You can't fix what you did to her, what you said to her, how you treated her. She may have regrets. I don't know. Will we hear from her? Will she say she regrets cutting it off? Will she have regrets not trying to make it work? Do she wish she had just left you and moved on and she wouldn't have been a household name? You wouldn't have been a household name? I don't know. Maybe she will come out and speak. But the point is, it's the past. It's over with. And so it's just the way it is. We're going to play commentary from the past, everybody. Once again, his toes have been amputated off from water contamination from Camp Lejeune, so he says. I don't know what's the truth to all of that, but I will show you a photograph and then I will get into the next audio pertaining to this storyline. Thank you for joining me. Welcome to the Vault XL. This is Mr. Bobbitt now, John Wayne Bobbitt. And as you see in this photograph, he no longer has any toes from water contamination from Camp Lejeune per his version. I don't know what's the truth to all of that information. And they say Biden has signed in, uh, signed off on a 22 uh, compensation for anyone who had these issues uh, with Camp Lejeune. I will do more research while I play this audio uh, pertaining to this Camp Lejeune business. Lord have mercy, what a mess. Lorena Bobbitt, are you going to apologize to your ex-husband for cutting off his private parts? Does she have remorse? Does she have any ill feelings toward him? Will he be able to move on? Because he is older now, so one would say he should be in a place of moving on. Some would say maybe he should even be in a place of forgiveness. I don't know if he's a Christian or not. Once again, this is 30 years ago. Uh, in this article by the Sun, you'll see them in happier times. And also, when she was in court, she was crying. Maybe she did have remorse for what she did. Uh, he's an ex Marine. She accused him of domestic abuse and also sexual assault. And they were only they were only married for four years. She obviously was not a United States citizen. And he's now fifty seven years old, I do believe. It's very interesting. So did she only marry him to become a citizen? I don't know. How did they meet? What were their initial plans when they met? Did they get along when they first met? Four years is a short while. So how long did they date? Because they were only married four years. So now you got to ask yourself, how long were they married? How long were they dating before they married? Great Day Houston is the source pertaining to her conversations about what happened. 20 
meets girl, boy falls in love with girl, boy marries girl. Raina Bobbitt goes on trial for maliciously wounding her husband. She has admitted emasculating her husband last June. But uh, a lot of people found out through your case kind of how domestic violence works. For you, you were very innocent in your first relationship. I had a similar experience in my first relationship. And when the abuse first started, I kept thinking, what am I doing wrong? Clearly, I must be doing something wrong to make him angry. You had the same thoughts. Yes, absolutely. And that's exactly why I always uh, tell myself, you know, like, uh, a lot of things uh, happen because we don't know the victims. And as a survivor of domestic abuse, I see those red flags that or whatever trigger my ex-husband or my abusive uh, partner to actually, you know, do the things he did. And I have no idea how to... Basically, I was walking in an eggshells during, you know, there's always a lot of things that, that uh, why we we blame ourselves as victims. And uh, that's that's the common thing for a victim or a survivor to go through. You know, like, what did I do wrong? What did I do to cause him to abuse me? And, and the thing is, there's absolutely nothing you can do. You can't be prettier, you can't be smarter, you can't be thinner, you can't be big. There's nothing you can do. What has been your experience with domestic violence? Have you heard about it? Have you seen it anywhere before? No, I have no, uh, I never saw anything. I didn't know anything. Um, we have to remember when I got married with John, um, I was 19 years old and I didn't have any experience in life. Uh, I didn't, I was very naive. I was very young. I didn't have any, I never see any uh, abuse in my family. I never really experienced anybody. You know, my friends never really told me about any abusive. So I never really, I can't, I couldn't compare anything like that. I always thought that it was only me suffering. You don't want to tell anybody because one, you're embarrassed, and other things, yeah, you don't want to make them angry. So were there times that you just wanted to blurt it out to somebody to help you, or you thought, can, can I call the police? What was that moment like for you? I was ashamed to, to say anything. I was very embarrassed. Um, I was not wanted to be open to anybody. I didn't, I just kept it to myself. I was just basically and scared, um, I'm scared that he's going to deport, uh, call the police to to deport me or send me to the deportation to another country because I was grand. June 23rd, 1993, that moment where you snapped. You just could not take it anymore. And, and what you did was, it was basically, it was, it was kind of a, a symbol or a, a tool of his abuse that you just said, I'm going to get rid of. Well, we have to remember also that, you know, like I said, there's uh, years of abuse. And he slapped me in my face, he pulled my hair, and he squeezed my face. It wasn't me uh, that, that day, that night, whatever happened, you know, that, that was not me. I was just basically broken. After it all happened, you were re-victimized, really, because people were asking right. all sorts of questions. I'm going to go through a couple of questions that, that uh, people oftentimes ask a victim of domestic abuse. The first one is, well, why didn't you just leave? If you are not a person who experienced domestic abuse, basically, you just don't know. To me, leaving is a process. It's not an event. And it takes several times for a woman actually to leave their abusive relationship. And oftentimes, if you have children and you don't have a job, you don't have means, uh, you don't have a family to go to. Yeah, yeah, you have no place to go. In 1993, there weren't that many places to go in so-called modern times. There still aren't that many places to go. And we need to flip that script and sort of, why don't you leave? Why don't you make him stop? Why doesn't he stop, right? We also, yeah, we also have, don't have, we're talking about 27 years ago, we don't, we don't have the reason. Let me interject here. During this earlier commentary that I read by the son, he said they didn't have family support. Where were their families? Where was his family? Did he have uh, parents that were alive. So I'm trying to understand the dynamic of this relationship. She was an immigrant, not a United States citizen. Where did they meet? How long did they date? Did she marry him to become a citizen? Did he marry her to, to make her a citizen? Were there signs of abuse in the beginning, controlling uh, a behavior by him and her? Was she jealous in the beginning? Was he jealous of her? I don't know. Was he cheating on her in the beginning? I don't know. But something's off here. And I do believe there was some truth to what has been alleged. Abuse, jealousy, probably affairs, because he admits that he did some wrong to her and he fanned the flames, he said. So for all I know, this was a tit for tat type situation. I'll do this to you, you do this to me. And they fed off each other until that brutal attack that night.
But where were their families? Were, were her family members abroad in another country? If so, how did she get here? How long has she been living in the United States? Up until the point they met, too many questions. So I'd like to get some answers to understand how these two came to be. Were they living on base at the time or their own separate home, apartment? What happened? Sources that did happen, such as that we have now, but we didn't have, you know, cell phones or the internet wasn't available until many times. Oh, it wasn't the internet, but it wasn't like it's now social media. Uh, the resources that we have compared to what we had uh, then, it was... It and another thing while she's talking to this lady, this is three years ago, you don't hear her saying, oh, well, I wanted to make my marriage work. She's talking about resources, family, internet, places to reach out to people, organizations. But what you're not hearing her, hearing her say is, well, I wanted to make it work. I wasn't a citizen. I was worried about, she did say she was worried about being deported and getting in trouble. She did say that. But you don't hear her saying, I love my husband, despite everything that was going on, despite he and I would, you know, uh, fight, argue, I flew off the handle, I got upset, I was jealous, I was this. She's just saying there weren't a lot of things as far as help, to help women. So do you feel like maybe she's not fully telling what she really felt for her husband at the time? And there's nothing wrong with saying, yes, I love my husband. He was abusive, he was this, he was that. And yes, I did care for him. I didn't want to leave. I didn't want a divorce. Because you hear in this commentary by the son, he states that he was going to divorce her that he had plans to leave her and that she wanted it to work. Will we hear her say this in this interview, that she wanted her marriage to work and that he did tell her he was going to leave her or is he making this up? I don't know. Was nothing like this. So now we have the ability, the ability to actually, you know, call 911. Or even when I called 911 at that time, uh, the dispatcher didn't know how to help a victim of domestic abuse. And shelters were not uh, many times. You know, even now in my community of 500,000 uh, people, they're almost, you know, there, there's only one shelter and 18 beds. I mean, how could you explain that? I mean, before it's even worse. After this all happened, it, it, it was it was interesting to watch it unfold because you were the victim of the abuse, but the way that it was seen by a lot of news stories, even comedic sketches like Saturday Night Live, they made John the victim. John? When Lorena um, cut off your penis, how did that make you feel? It really, you know, it was very hurtful to see those, uh, the cruel jokes about me and, you know, and I said, but I can't believe it, you know, this, this is something serious. How can people laugh about a domestic abuse person who, who experienced rape by her husband or sexual assault? It's just devastated. As sensational as this case was, when the dust settled, there were changes that were made because of it. Uh, one of those things in many communities, when police showed up to a 911 call, they didn't just say, hey, you got to work it out. Uh, they could do more about it. You also founded Lorena's Red Wagon organization. What does that group do? Yes, yeah, so it was Lorena's Red Wagon, now it's called Lorena Yala Foundation, and uh, the mission is basically to help to educate uh, the community and at its domestic levels, and uh, basically educate about domestic abuse, domestic violence, um, intimate uh, partner violence, and sexual assault, and that's what I do now. You got a chance to see some people at the Houston Area Women's Center. What is it like for you to connect with them and see in their eyes, you are not alone and there are people who are fighting on your behalf? Oh, that's wonderful. I mean, that's exactly what I do. I go to the shelters on the opportunity to, to go to um, the uh, Houston Area uh, Women's Center and talk to the clients there, the people who are there. Um, if they were amazing, I mean, I wish I could actually hold them and say, look, I mean, we believe you. There's a four-part docu-series that retells the story, but it reclaims the narrative. And, and that story is just as important today as it has ever been. But was it cathartic for you to be able to look at that story told in more through your eyes and, and, and in the right way, in your opinion, of, of what all happened? 
Absolutely. I feel vindicated because my story was uh, sensationalized uh, before by the media and uh, by people who didn't understand about domestic violence or domestic abuse. Um, and, uh, you know, to be able to reclaim my story, it was an opportunity to tell people exactly what happened and uh, to be able to, to have the opportunity to talk about it, uh, it made me feel even more free. I go to the shelters and I, and I talk to these women. Every one of them wants so desperately for their abuser to apologize. They feel like that, that needs to be part of your healing. And, you know, I think a lot of them are used to the apology, then the abuse again, the apology, then the abuse again. So sometimes that apology doesn't really mean very much, but, but to understand that their apology sometimes will not come and cannot get in the way of your own healing. Has John ever apologized to you? And did you very think that he really meant that? He did apologize um, before. But I always thought that his apology was never sincere. I kind of struggled with that, with this. I was talking to, you know, a friend of mine earlier. And, um, you know, to me, you know, for me to live I sure am. In life, I know that I have to Because I feel like him, it. That's why. I will never, ever forget what he did to me. Oh, with with uh, the women I speak to, and you're included in that for sure. I know myself at one point when I was able to get out is when I realized that I was more than that person that I find it interesting here that the lady asked her, did he apologize to her? She said he did before. Did he mean it? Was he sincere at the time uh, when he apologized to her? How soon after did he apologize? Was it in the hospital once they got home? How long were they together in the house after the incident took place? Because this article I read by The Sun said they were trying to work it out, but obviously the state brought forward charges against uh, Lorena at the time. So how long were they together before state charges were brought? Did they continue to live in the house together while she attended trial? We also learned that she got a sentence of 45 days in a mental inst institution. Were they still together at that time? What was the timeline between the actual uh, dismembering of the private part and then her sentence. How long was their relationship during that time and afterwards? Never saw me ask. And when you're able to actually tell the story, like I said before, is when you're able to actually take the steps in the process. It is a long process. I was never, you know, the comfortable person or the confident person that I am today. But those, those, uh, experiences make me also the person who I am today. And today I'm an advocate, I'm an activist, and I'm able to speak freely um, every time about my story and share my story with the whole world. Lorena, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. All right, everybody. So here, you three years ago, Great Day Houston is the source, Yes, he apologized to her. So what we have to ask ourselves, as I stated earlier in this commentary, is this situation with him wanting an apology from her is because he misses her. He still longs for her. He still is in love with her. Will she apologize? How does her husband or current partner feel about what she did? You have to also ask yourself, what man would want to date a woman after this happens? You have to think about all those type of things. Wouldn't you be scared that she would relapse, pop off? Uh, get paranoid, do it again. I, I think I'd be kind of fearful as a man dating a woman knowing she, uh, you know, dismembered a body part from a man. I would. She also has a child. How does that child, and how, and how does that child feel knowing what their mother did many moons ago pertaining to uh, Mr. John Wayne Bobbitt? Will they finally get this res resolved? I don't know. Mr. Bobbitt speaks to ABC News about his relationship with Lorena, Lorena leading up to the knife attack. Thank you for joining me, everybody. We will see how it goes. All righty. Yep. Streaming live from the TV. I sure am. Why not? Thank you all so much for joining me. This is live number two, everybody. Thank <laughs> you.
sooner we'll talk about stories of the year. The case has struck a nerve. The sore details of a marriage gone berserk. It really took the world by storm. The 24-year-old manicurist from Venezuela is accused of severing the penis of her husband, 26-year-old John Bobbitt, while he was sleeping. From the moment anyone heard about this story, it was, what? Because it's myth. It's been 25 years. But even today, I imagine if you walk into a store, and somebody your credit card, you say your name, you get a reaction? Yeah, so they're shocked, they're startled, or, wow, you're the guy? <laughs> you're that guy? Yeah. John was a Marine. Lorena, a recent immigrant from Venezuela, besotted with the American dream. They met at a Marine Corps ball. Tell me what you thought when you first saw Lorena. Saw her over there, she it looks, you know, shy and innocent, and I went over there and messed her in the ass, so. I thought, you know, here's my number. He was a very nice guy, and we started dating. That's how I really fell in love with him. They talked about getting married, but that marriage got rushed when her green card or visa or whatever was running out. I never really expected to have a, a perfect marriage, but I know there's things that if you, you can compromise and uh, you can you cope. In 1991, John gets discharged from the Marine Corps, so he is kind of without a steady paycheck. And he scraps and he tries. Lorena is the main breadwinner. What was Lorena? So, so let's ask this question. How long was he in the Marine Corps? Why was he discharged? Pertinent questions. How long was he in the Marine Corps and why was he discharged? Now we hear she's the only one working, making income as a manicurist. And you also hear in the Sun uh, commentary that I read earlier that he feels like her boss exacerbated the situation and was forming a narrative, I guess, of who he is and whatever uh, Lorena told her about him. So are we talking about a messy boss? But she wouldn't have known no more than what Lorena told her. This is what I always say about a story. Everything's about perception. Because what I hear, you don't hear. What I see, you don't see. Doing for a living. She was working as a nanny for Jan. And she had, you know, working for the beauty salon doing nails. Jana Basuti was a businesswoman who owned the nail cuttery. Jana was a, some, maybe a little bit of a mother figure at that point. Lorena had oftentimes seemed to have cried on Jana's shoulder, and uh, Jana seems to have tried to protect her. She said she loved him, and she wanted her marriage to work, and you know, she was going to do anything to try to make her marriage work. What would you be fighting about? TV, the radio, stupid stuff. You were young. You just fought over things that we shouldn't have been fighting over. She was stubborn. She was selfish. And she wanted things her way. They were wow. who were selfish. Tempestuous. Stubborn. They were tempestuous in their loves. They were tempestuous in their jealousies. They were tempestuous in their fights. How soon did you feel he began getting beyond speaking and becoming physically abusive to you? Um, like a month after. Oh, yeah. One month? Yes. Into the marriage? Yes. But she got upset with it. You know, if anybody talked to me. Any girl I heard, some girl that I looked in the a girl's direction, she would get mad. She punched you. Yes. Lorena has said that you were physically abusive to her. Yeah. Well, it's easy to turn things around. I can say, so, well, she's physically abusive to me. She never went to the hospital, never had anything seriously wrong with her at all. Not too well. It wasn't like we were out to kill each other. You never fought back. Try you know, to do her or restrain her. Not he forced me into sex. He told me that he was that that kind of sexual uh, sex for sex excited him. Wow. And uh, I would just cry. For sex excited him. Sex. Online person. Oh, sorry about that. For sex excited him. That's not good, uh, Mr. John Wayne. Why would you get excited by for sex? To me, that's a sign of a sadist sociopath. Because next we'll hear you like sex with her eyes closed, pretending she's dead, not breathing. Just say. Because one thing begets another. Are we talking about Mr. Bobbitt as a sadist? Because you have to ask yourself, why would this man then go on to do a porn video, or maybe more, after this incident? Makes no sense. This is very bizarre. 
information. I don't think she's lying about that. Because that's just something hard to even say. He liked forced sex. So obviously he got turned on by, allegedly, forced sex. So how many times did he force her into sexual assault? How many times did he sexually assault his wife? And some people argue and say, well, so long as they're married, it's not, it's not rape. Well, some states say that it is. Married or not. Like so many of the accusations that fly back and forth between John and Lorena, this one is hard to reconcile. John denies that he was ever excited by violent sex. When Lorena talked about her marriage with John, it's a nightmare from beginning to end. John maintains that he never hit her, but he admits that he might have kind of pushed her a little or that when he was restraining her, he might have been rough. What's your definition of spousal abuse? Oh, it could be anything. It could be up to home, uh, you know, verbal abuse, you know, calling somebody in love, or a trap. Did you do any of those things? Um, in moments of anger, did you push her, shove her? Yeah, we fought. But that's not spousal abuse? I think that's fighting with each other. Did it leave Mark? See, that's why I was going to say, but I wanted to wait before I formed an opinion. I noticed a slight grin when they were talking a few minutes ago. And I said, no, don't say anything, Angela. Now you see that he's grinning here when she asks, did you fight out of anger? Who's to say he just didn't fight her because he didn't have to be angry? Of course, one to say he's angry, but what I'm saying, provoked. Maybe he just like fighting, fussing, tussling. She's headstrong, he's headstrong. You see he's grinning here. Oh yeah, we fought each other. But he's grinning when he says it. That would lead me to believe he probably fought her a lot. She probably didn't have to do or say anything. Whether they argued over a TV, a Christmas tree, this or that, I think possibly it wouldn't have taken much to get him to go off. He was in the military. You don't know what he did in the military. Don't know his actions before he went in the military, what type of person he was before he went, what type of person he became while in the military. Did he fight in any type of wars or anything? See, all those things matter to form your disposition as a person. So now you're out not working, don't have any income, relying on her income. You got to ask where they were living, were they on a base, non-base, small apartment, small house, struggling, money woes. She's trying to become a citizen. Did he marry her so she could become a citizen? Did she marry him so she could become a citizen? You got to ask all those questions. Who was he at that time? Who was she at that time? So you restrained her? Of course. I mean, I may have marks on me, but I didn't fly. Wow, but I didn't did want him. Okay. Did you become so, pregnant by John? Yes, I did. I was a so once again, basically he's diminishing the abuse. Oh yeah, I got marks on me, but I, I didn't want him. <laughs> well, who would want marks on him? Uh, Mr. Bobby. Nobody would want them. This is this is nonsense here. Very excited because um I mean, I wanted to have a child. What did he say? Do you remember? He said that I I would not be able to to raise a child for some reason. I said, I think I will be a wonderful mother. Did you have the abortion for him? Yes. You felt you were losing without him? I don't want to have a child without a father. So now we have an allegation that she had an abortion and he didn't want the child. So, Mr. Bobby, were you telling her ugly things about who she was at the time, that she wouldn't be a good mother? Did you say those things to her? Naturally, who would want a baby by one? Somebody that's abusing them, but we've seen that happen. A woman will have the child thinking it will change the relationship. So in this case, she did the opposite. She didn't keep the child because obviously he didn't want the child. He was talking down to her. See, this is what I'm saying. The signs were always there that something was wrong. You hear her tell this woman one month into being with him, he became abusive one month into the marriage. So we got abuse one month in, talking down to her, fighting, fussing, tussling, uh, this is bad. This is really, really bad. And now she's unalived a child because of whatever he's saying to her. 
they weren't ready anyways. So I, I suggested that, yeah, well, well, we should wait. She wasn't happy about it, but, you know, what can you do? She never recovered from the trauma of an abortion that she wasn't completely on board for. And she carried the terrible trauma for her, the guilt, right up into the moment that she picked up that knife. How often did you say no to the sexual abuse? Exactly. What I'm did curious. He physically and sexually abuse you. It was frequently. It was um, every time he would hit me, he would just try to force me into the sex again. Uh, so she said frequently. So what's frequently? Once a week, twice a week. So not just jumping on top of you and taking the sex. He's hitting her naturally to subdue her. So he's a violent person. So I think what we're hearing in this information about the son of him wanting an apology by Lorena is his guilt. He knew, let's say he knows that he mistreated her while being married to her. His conscience is still whooping his ass and he cannot live with himself for what he has done. So in turn, now he says, give me an apology. Give me an apology. I can move on. I can, I want my name back. But that's the point. You didn't have a name before. You had your government name, but nobody knew who you were before then. Nobody knew her. The only people that knew you two are the people that were around you. Other than that, nobody in America knew you two existed as far as mainstream media until she cut off the private part. And maybe had you treated her well, you wouldn't be feeling the feelings that you have right now, which is guilt. I do believe Mr. Bobbitt feels guilt. Please go back to the beginning of this live stream to get that set information by the sun. I would wake up shaking and scared and, and I would have nightmares. The tensions are building and building and building in this marriage. John had already, I think in the week prior, said, look, this is not working out. And so I'm going to get a divorce. <laughs> to her, to get her like a ton of bricks. She was crying, she was begging, she, said she didn't believe in divorce. The day before, the incident takes place. A friend of John's, Robert Johnson from Buffalo, comes and stays with the couple. He arrived and said, Well, since you know you're here, um, let's go out and have some fun. The couple. He arrived and said, Well, so I'm going to get a divorce. <laughs> to her, to get her like a ton of bricks. She was crying, she was begging, she said she didn't believe in divorce. <laughs> The day before the incident takes place, a friend of John's, Robert Johnson from Buffalo, comes and stays with the couple. He arrived and said, well, since you know, you're here, um, let's go out and have some fun. Let's go hang out and show you around, you know, DC. We went out. The last thing she did that night, she had some literature on a record that she had read that night and put it on the nightstand and gone to sleep. And he... So, obviously, he had been sexually assaulting his wife because why would she go get literature and put it on the nightstand? Now we have a girl in the story who's come down. They're having fun. They're going out on the town. She's not hanging with them. So this is probably what was discussed in this Sun article that I read to you earlier, that... She wasn't happy with whatever happened that same night as far as him going out on the town and doing whatever. Because I asked that during the live stream. Was he working at a bar? Because we heard that he became a uh, security guy. And that helped uh, fuel her uh, insecurities about him messing around with other women. So my thing is, if you knew that you were having problems with her, why are you going out on the town with your friend knowing she's jealous, obsessive? Or did you just say, I don't care. I've got to live. I've got to have fun. I'm not going to turn down uh friendship and camaraderie because my wife's jealous or maybe as i said he just didn't care he allegedly a week before he had already made plans to leave her divorce her you also hear him saying she didn't want to divorce but you also hear in that commentary i played earlier with her and the other lady who was reporting uh the interview she never told that woman she didn't want the divorce and that he asked for a divorce. That's one thing you did not hear her tell that reporter. That, oh yeah, by the way, a week or so or days before he asked me for a divorce. So maybe she didn't want to let that woman know that she really uh, wanted to stay in this abusive marriage. 
Because that's a hard thing to admit to people. Oh, yeah, this person's raping me, assaulting me, talking down to me. I'm aborted a kid. And yeah, I still wanted to stay with them. So maybe there's some truth to what he's saying and some truth to what she's saying as well. But then you got to ask John, why would you have your friend come down when you're fighting and feuding with your wife? Would that be a good idea? No, it wouldn't. So did this guy come down directly to see him or he was just in town on business and decided to stop by to see him? Either way, it was a recipe for disaster. He comes in loaded to the gills with alcohol and he decides to crawl in bed, help himself uh, because, you know, that's my wife. Did you speak at all? Exactly, my Hello, wife. Marina, before you went to sleep? I remember her trying to, you know, play with me, you know, uh, I was sleeping, I was exhausted, I can I can respond to her advances, either sexually or verbally. Yeah, right. <laughs> He's like, would you mind? Do you all believe that? Because let him tell it they hadn't been talking and not doing anything. Well, she can say that too. You know, we hadn't been doing anything. He's been doing all the work because he's been taking the goodies. And as I said, some men and women would assume and say it's not right because they were married. They jumped on top of me and... Um... He um he started to um, grab my arms really tight like before he always do and um, so I said I don't want to have sex and I was trying to push him but I couldn't he forced me into and I heard my uh, underwear was uh, ripping off and uh, I was just fighting it it feels like I was fighting everything so you say she was trying to have sex with you and you were too tired right that's a pretty big swing from her saying you forcibly tore off her underwear and raped her yeah everything was done in my sleep sexual advances the talking all in a deep sleep but you say you didn't rape this is bullshit john and you know it so what she tore her own underwear off and pinned her own arms down how would she be doing this if you're asleep? This makes no sense. You are not wanting to admit to the world that you raped your wife and you raped her frequently. Because who wants to say that? And as I said, it is right, whether you're married or not, in a relationship or not. If a person tells you no, then that's what they mean. They mean no. I don't want it. I'm not interested. So first it's you were sleepy, tired. She wanted it, touchy-feely. She's touching you. You can't respond. But she claims you tore off her underwear, pinned her arms down. This, this is, this is bad. Her? Never ripped anybody in my life. Is it possible that you no, were trying no, to have I, sex with her and she didn't want to have sex? No idea what happened when they fell asleep and she cut her off. Didn't know what transpired there. So there you have it. He says, "I went to sleep and she cut my penis off." Did it go that way or not? Because how was she also, which you have to tell yourself, in the act of him assaulting her, how would she have been able to cut it off if her arms are pinned? So I believe there's some truth to what both are saying. And there's also some lying. You have to decide which version you believe and how it went actually down. Could it be he did come in drunk, went to sleep, and she cut it off? Or... He was trying to assault her, or let's say he was assaulting her, excuse me. He then fell asleep, and then she reached over and got a knife from the nightstand or drawer under the mattress or went in the kitchen and got it and cut it off, came back and cut it off. So how did it go? Or possibly she knew what was going to happen when he went out with a friend. He was going to be toasty, roasty, drunk in a cooter brown. She already had the knife waiting. Which is it? What's this premeditated? Stay woke. I will put a poll up pertaining to the premeditation of the dismemberment of his private part. He assaults her and and she's just laying there thinking, not again. And she went into the kitchen to get a glass of water. There we go. She saw the knife. Okay, and so she got out. So many things coming into my mind. I, I don't know how to describe things like from the very first day he hit me, 
uh, things about the, the abortion, you know, so many things when he was torturing me, when he was beating me up, when he had forced sex with me, everything, it just came so fast. I pick up the knife and I went back to, to the bedroom. I, I took the sheets off and, and I, I caught him. When I sprung up and I was bleeding, I was applying pressure. I immediately thought it was some kind of a horror movie. It was a nightmare, but it was real. It uh, yeah, turned into reality. Horrified, terrified. Uh, I was going to die. That was it. I'm going to die. She flees the apartment. In her left hand penis, in her right hand, she has the knife. <laughs> and drives off into the night. Stay with us. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos. Wow, wow, wow. I'm trying to get Show you this video. And watch live event coverage. Click on the right over here. Let's see what they have to say part two of this. Please take the polls on my community page. I'm posting a poll right now pertaining to the premeditation of this crime. Thank you. Is Lorena Bobbitt a greedy, jealous woman who sexually mutilated her husband? He raped her several times over a three-day period. Lorena took a large kitchen knife, cut off her sleeping husband's penis. She turns around, marches right back into the bedroom, and just does the deed. I'm not saying that for network television. <laughs> My name's Jim Sane. I'm a urologist and I enjoyed a very quiet life at Prince William Hospital in Manassas, Virginia. And all that changed for me June 23rd in 1993. The phone on my bedside woke me up in the middle of the night. And uh, really all I knew about this on the way into the hospital was that a penis had been amputated and the organ was missing. What's the first thing you did when you woke up? I cleared my thoughts and applied pressure and I uh, went to the, wake my friend up to tell him to get me to the hospital. Describe the look on your doctor's face when you showed him what Lorena had done. It's like his jaw drop. <laughs> I knew I had to get a microvascular surgeon. They said, you know, we've got this guy here, his penis has been cut off. And can you come down and basically put it back on? I said, okay, if you have the penis. They said, no. Meanwhile, Lorena has been in the apartment with really a knife in one hand and his penis in the other. And she goes downstairs to her car. I remember I couldn't make a turn because I, uh, my hands were, were um, with something on it. And, so I I tried to turn, but then I I saw that I had it in, in my hand. You were still holding this separate penis yes. in the car. Yes. Yes. And so I I looked at him and I screamed. <laughs> I threw it out of the window. And uh, I just drove it as fast as I could. Fast and faster. My husband said, Lorena's here. And I said, Oh my God, what has John done to her? And I walked down the stairs and she settled in the corner of my living room, screaming and crying, in like a fetal position. And then she said, I cut his penis off. And I said, You did what? And I said, Well, I think we better call you know, 911. Jenna from Lorena is able to find out the rough coordinates of the penis. So Jenna tells the police roughly where the penis is located. We ended up coming out here to look for it after learning that the wife had thrown it out the car window. Police went to that field. It was about six o'clock on a June morning and the police scavenged about, found the organ undamaged, uh, no dogs had chewed on it. It was uh, retrievable. The police do find the penis by this kind of grassy knoll by the 7-Eleven. 
They go into the 7-Eleven with the penis. They get a hot dog container. They fill it with ice. They put the penis on top of the ice, and that's how they take it to the hospital. And then hours of surgery ensue, and it's reattached. Lorena Bobbitt appeared on the verge of tears this morning as she appeared in court. And she was charged with malicious wounds. That means she not only wounded and severed his penis, but she did it with malice, hatred, revenge. She was looking at probably 20 years. While we were in the hospital, we found out that John was going to be charged with a marital sexual assault charge. We couldn't believe it. How long did you have to stay in the hospital? Three weeks. And when did you know that everything was going to be back to normal, or at least close to normal? I think it was the second week. They called my mom. I told her that uh, I had an erection. And how did your, what was your mom's reaction? Oh, uh, yeah, she went into that. She said, no, you're going to talk to your dad about that. And I was excited. How quickly did you know? that what happened that night was going to be a very big story. No, I knew it was, uh, it was, it was big because uh, they were trying to, you know, keep the reporters from coming out at the hospital. They were trying to get into the, the room. What was so unusual here is that they both ended up in the legal crosshairs, both charged with crimes and both facing trial. John Bobbitt arrived surrounded by attorneys. Both Bobbitts went to trial. John first in November of 1990 and was found not guilty of marital sexual assault. You ever worried that the jury wouldn't believe you, that they would think you raped Lorena? I was innocent. I didn't know I was there. Lorena Bobbitt entered the Manassas courtroom to face a jury of seven women and five men. Lorena Bobbitt was found not guilty of malicious wounding by reason of insanity just two months later. They were really shocked. How can somebody get away with it? Sometimes juries do a kind of rough justice. They look at what happened, and they said, that's enough. The trailer trust is hidden somewhere within the Rocky Mountains. Next, what John and Lorena are doing today. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the... All right, everybody. That's the said commentary. Feel free to go into the YouTube queue if you want to further <laughs> watch this content, uh, any other episodes they have. Uh, hopefully there won't be any copyright strikes of the ABC News. And I mean, I have to avoid it out of this uh, live stream. You're entitled to believe whatever, because I don't know what happened that night. I don't know if he was sleeping, came in drunk, went to bed. He went to sleep and she cut it off, thinking about all of the nasty things he had done to her. That would be option one. Option two would be he came in trying to uh, hurt her, harm her. She already had a knife out. Don't know. Or he assaulted her and then he went to sleep and she went in the kitchen and came back with a knife and cut it off. Or after he assaulted her, he fell asleep and she already had the knife in the room. Take which option you like. What's interesting about the storyline is that he was found not guilty of sexually assaulting her by a jury. That's one charge, because that's his charge against him. But yet she only goes into a hospital of 45 days as her sentence for the criminally, uh, you know, uh, mentally insane. Uh, so as you see, the wheels of justice were unbalanced. She has a charge against her for cutting off his private part. He has a charge against him for sexually assaulting her. In his trial, they say he's not guilty of sexually assaulting her. But in her trial, where she's accused of cutting off his private part, she only gets a 45 day stay in a mental hospital. She was claiming she was insane. So was she insane? I also put that on my community page. I've already put up some polls so far uh, pertaining to this uh, debacle between the two, and I'm gonna look and see if anybody has answered any of the questions. So far, nobody has, uh, well, somebody has answered my questions from earlier. I said, John Bobby wants an apology from ex-wife Lorena. Why ask now problems with his anatomy? Should she give it to him? 22 votes. 23% says yes, she should give him the apology. 77% says no. Very interesting. And I also have some polls up here pertaining to OJ Simpson and the passing of OJ and the secrets he took to the grave, so on and so forth. Feel free to take those polls. I'll come back with those results when I do my OJ Simpson um, 
live stream, which was supposed to be the first one I did today, but the new update with the Kansas uh, women is the reason why the OJ Simpson video was postponed. I ask you, should Loretta Bobby have received a prison sentence instead of a 45 day stay in the mental hospital? Nobody has taken the poll yet. Uh, I also asked, did John Bobbitt frequently sexually assault Lorena? No one has taken that poll either. And then naturally I asked you the scenario of uh, her claiming to have been assaulted by him I guess he goes to sleep. She goes into the kitchen, gets a knife, and comes back and proceeds to cut off his anatomy. Do you believe her version? I don't know myself. I don't know how it happened. But I do believe that he sexually assaulted her. I do believe he would hurt her physically, beat her up, whatever. Uh, I do believe they fought each other. I won't doubt she probably initiated some fights with him as well uh, because he laughs when he talks about that. And that leads me to believe he's telling the truth of that they fought each other, he fought her, and this was a continual situation with them. Now, did he ask for a divorce a week to days before? I'm not sure. Uh, but as I said in that other interview where she talks uh, to this lady, she never let it be known that he filed for divorce. She never mentioned an abortion in that interview with her. She just talks about being abused by him. So, you know, I think people pick and choose what they want to ask. I don't know why the lady didn't ask her these questions because people still would want to know, like, you know, what was the relationship like? You know, what was going on with you all? What was the jump off to, you know, cutting off his private part? I didn't hear any of that in that, you know, nine minute video. But nonetheless, it is the past. I would assume she's moved on. But right now, the latest information is that Mr. John wants an apology from her. You will hear me tell you in that article uh, from that article that he said, why didn't she just talk about it the next morning? She probably was at her wit's end. That's why she cut it off. I'm not saying what she did was right. It's not a route I would have taken, but I'm also, I'm not her. I wasn't in her shoes. And I don't really know what she was going through at the time mentally. You're talking about someone who was not a United States citizen. I don't know what her mental capacity was while she was living with him, dating him. I mean, well, married to him. Uh, you know, you got to ask all those questions. Her IQ, uh, her uh, her analogy of what her uh, marriage was to him, her analogy of what marriage was supposed to be. She said, you know, she felt like she married him. She didn't believe in divorce. She also has had a baby aborted by this man. So she probably grew to hate him. I won't doubt that's what happened. She grew to hate him, loved him, but hated him all the same. I love this person, but they're beating me up. They're talking down to me. Then he's telling her she wouldn't be a good mother. So now she's aborted a kid because one, he's acting like he don't want the baby and he's talking down to her. So I don't know if he told her directly, hey, I don't want no kid with you. I didn't hear her say that, but she said he was saying she wouldn't make a good mother. And I'd like to know what he meant by that. Is it because she was impulsive? She flew off the handle, she get upset, she was emotional. Did she cry a lot? Was she jealous? Is that what he meant? You're, you're a jealous person? You couldn't you know, be emo emotionally fit? But then some people would say, well, we can scratch all of whatever the hell was wrong with her. Here's a guy who probably drank did he use drugs? Was he currently working at the time of the crime? That's a, you have to ask all those questions. Was he working? We learned that she was a breadwinner at one point in the marriage when he got out of the Marine uh, Corps. He didn't have a job. So was he working at the time? Was he viable? Was he a drinker? Was he an alcoholic? Did he take drugs? Was he out here having affairs? Was he beating her up, mean to her, sexual assaulting her? You hear her saying he liked to take it. He got turned on by forced sex. I don't think she lied when she said that. I don't think she lied because you could tell it, 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 that would be a shameful thing to even say about a human being. Oh yeah, they like taking my goodies. They enjoy having sex in this manner. They got off on for sex. That would be a hard thing to say about a person because you're in that storyline. You know what I'm saying? While you're telling it. And that would be a shameful thing to admit that this person has been abusing me sexually, although I'm married to them, but it's still wrong to force me to have sex and I don't want to. And then she also mentioned that he would hit her before taking the goodies. So he's a violent person. Now, is he that same person today? I don't know, but some people still judge him accordingly. And she probably may still have those same thoughts that he's the same person, monster as she called him. I think in my opinion, 
This is just my opinion. I think that this new information of him wanting an apology from Lorena is because he still feels guilty about what he did to her, which led to her cutting off his private part. Uh, the fact that he was able to get it retrieved. You also hear she was running around with it. It's very interesting information. And luckily, she didn't throw it somewhere to where it could not be found to be sewn back on. Also, it could have been sewn back on, not worked. All those things. So then you have to ha you have to ask those questions as well. How did it work out down the road? This reattached organ. Did it continue to function? As I told you, he did a porn video uh, with the reattached organ. It seemed like it was you know upright. But who does that? I think he's a narcissist. I think he was very controlling in his marriage to her. I think he was the type he wanted things his way. I won't doubt that she probably was stubborn herself, had some ways about herself that weren't the best. But nonetheless, I believe he was abusive. I believe he goaded her a lot. He antagonized her a lot. And I also believe he sexually assaulted his wife frequently. I also believe he physically abused her and mentally abused her. I believe it was a volatile situation. And I believe she popped off that night. I don't agree with what she did, but it is what it is. She did what she did. She got the 45-day sentence in a mental institution. And that's the end of that. They're no longer married. She's moved on. Somebody else married, also has a child. Don't know how the child is. Don't know how they feel about the situation. So now we will wait to see if she will respond. If she will give him a public apology or apology to him, to him. I still don't think he'll be satisfied even with an apology. Because I think he has some internal bullshit going on with him. And let me tell you something. Guilt is an MF. Some people never move forward from things that they've done to people or things that have been done to them. And I think he realizes he had a good thing or he didn't make it work or he didn't attempt to make it work in the right way. Because let's be truthful, forcing somebody to have sex, how are you going to have a good relationship like that? Because you're a violator. And what I have to tell myself is the obvious. If he likes forced sex, he would also go out here and assault somebody else. So that's something people should be concerned with. Was he out here also assaulting other women? taking the cookies, groping, you know, touching women inappropriately, saying inappropriate things to women. Because obviously he equated affection with rape. And that's not affection. That's not intimacy. Forcing someone to have sex, whether you're in a relationship with them or not, married or not, it's wrong. Because that shows me you have something mentally wrong with you when you think it's okay to take sex from somebody. Because what you have to tell yourself is the obvious, wife or not, Today it's right. What else would you do to her? What else would you do to somebody else in the street? Because we learned it, as you said, rather, she gave you the silent treatment. So silent would be not talking to you, possibly not having sex naturally. So then you would go out here in the street and get it from somebody else. And I won't doubt that you did. And then we now have to ask ourselves, did you force yourself on the women that you were out here in the street with? Did he have affairs? And did he also do the same thing right then. Because what did I tell you about this sexual assault business? One minute it's forcible rape. You you would also might be the type to say, oh, I want you to close your eyes and play dead. Because you have men who are into that. Wanting the person to pretend, the woman to pretend to be lifeless. See, those things can exacerbate. Forcible rape, playing dead. Next thing you know, somebody's strangling you. So we're forcing you, now we're strangling you. And the next thing you know, you do have a dead person. I look at things like that because I think there's something wrong with him. I think he's mad at the world. I think he's upset because both, all his toes have been amputated off of both feet. I think there is something seriously, seriously wrong with Mr. John Bobby. And I think he's guilty for how he treated her. I think he still pines for her. He still cares or in love with her or his ideology of love. And I think he realizes he, he made a fatal mistake in his relationship with her and that's what led to her cutting off his private part. Now, does she have remorse? I don't know. Does she regret what she did? I don't know. I will put those polls up on the uh, page as well. Regret, remorse. And then I'm going to do a little background on this Lejeune incident of uh, water contamination and we will see what we can come up with that. What's the truth to this information about why his toes were amputated? Let's see what I can find. Thank you for joining me. 
Sorry about my OJ information. I'll try to get it out as quick as possible. There we go, right there. Let's see what they have to say about this Camp Lejeune nonsense. It says Camp Lejeune water contamination problem occurred at Marine Corps Base Camp Lejeune in Jacksonville, North Carolina from 1953 to 87. End date, December 31st. Okay. They also have settlement claims pertaining to this. And Mr. Biden has set forth uh, monies to be paid to victims uh, in a bill in 2022. It says, did you or a family member reside or work near the Camp Lejeune Marine Corps uh, for more than 30 days before 1988? So they're asking you these questions to see if you qualify for monies uh, to be uh, given to you. The base was a frequent pollution spot where oil, industrial wastewater, and toxic chemicals used as degreasers and solvents were all normally dumped in the local storm drains between 1952 and 1987. So you're talking about five, 35 years of contamination. The military base was labeled as a major polluter by the Environmental Protection Agency. Reports 1980 discussed how buried fuel tanks could leak and tank the drinking water of the area. Only in 1982 was the water being tested and proper disposal techniques were outlined in 1984. However, the damage was already done and everyone on base and in the surrounding area was exposed. Wow, wow, wow. These are the issues of people who I guess have had these issues since working or living on the base or near the base. Autoimmune diseases, cancers, fertility, birth injuries, neuro neurological uh, disorders, organ damage, or failures. Wow, wow. This is something. It says there were thousands of cases reported. The total effects of the contamination and the range to which it spread are still under ongoing investigation. Though the pollution started at Camp Lejeune, most of those stationed at the Marine Corps base left over the 30-year contamination. These people are now fighting for their lives across the country. Despite the thousands of stories uh, told by victims of this tragedy, there are still thousands and more unaccounted for in the United States. So this is Camp Lejeune Contamination Lawsuits website. If you want to uh, go on the website to file a complaint, and once again, this is pertaining to legislation done, and Mr. Biden has signed off on this act. The Camp Lejeune Justice Act 2022 was signed into law on August 10th of that year, 2022. Anyone who resided at the base between August 1953 and December of 1987 for 30 days is capable of pursuing legal action. Victims or their surviving family members may now qualify for damages caused by this governmental negligence. Victims have sought justice for decades. Only now, after years of activism and diligence, justice can finally be done. Wow, wow, wow. So you can file a claim here at the Camp Lejeune Contamination Lawsuits website, 877-990-4609. Just giving you a little backdrop on those uh, allegations that Mr. John Bobbitt has made pertaining to why his toes were amputated. Uh, that is said information. Uh, I don't know if there's truth to that, if he has a documentation to show contamination from the water there. Who else has gone forward to file lawsuits? How many people have filed lawsuits? They're saying they don't really know of claimed and unclaimed. Will these people be paid monies uh, for any type of organ failure, autoimmune diseases, cancers, so on and so forth from being on the base and near the base? Wow, it's a lot to digest. But nonetheless, once again, Mr. Uh, John Wayne Bobbitt, uh, 57 years of age, wants an apology from his ex-wife, Lorena Bobbitt, for dismembering his part, male part, 30 years ago. Will she comply? Will she give this? I shouldn't say comply, but will she apologize? Does she have remorse? Would she like to talk to him about what happened? Will she tell him, hey, I made a mistake. I should have 
talk this issue over with you about what you've been doing, but I don't really think there would have been a proper resolution. I don't think she could have gone to him and say, I'm tired of you. I'm tired of you raping me. I'm tired of you putting your hands on me. As you heard, she put pamphlets on the nightstand about rape. You think that would make him act right? I think that would make him more angry. I could see a man coming home seeing that. He would probably beat you. I could see him especially doing it after he's had a couple of drinks in him. I don't see that there was a positive resolution. I think what she should have done was try to reach out to that woman that she worked for at the manicure shop and asked her to help her find an apartment or find somewhere else to live and then file for divorce. That's what she should have done, but she didn't. And that's the point. You can't go back. Thank you all so much for joining me. God bless you. Please follow this network. Take the polls. Uh, feel free to comment on this because I've posted a post pertaining to this case and uh, him wanting an apology from Lorena. Will she give it to him? I've also uploaded some shorts in the YouTube queue. Uh, just 15 minute second shorts pertaining to Riley Strain, OJ Simpson, and John Wayne Bobbitt. Look for more shorts from the Queen and upcoming will be content about Mr. OJ Simpson. It was scheduled for today. But the Kansas schedule, uh, new information threw off my live pertaining to OJ, and I didn't want to put OJ in that live stream. So I'd like to do that separately if I can. But thank you all so much for following this network. Movie suggestion for the week is The Burning Girls, now free on Tubi. It is um, a short series about crimes that took place of unaliving of two girls two girl children, and obviously they are perhaps hunting this small village. So please check out that content, and I will be back with more stimulating content and information uh, during the next live stream. Tomorrow I propose to talk about Mr. John Wayne Gacy, the notorious serial killer who resided outside of Chicago, Illinois in Des Plaines. And we're going to chop up and go back in history and talk about his crimes, talk about any other uh, victims who may exist because there were eight men, boys, who were not accounted for and verified, but two have been as of a documentary from 2018. And I will also do research to see if there have been some other uh, young people uh, verified uh, in that eight. Thank you so much for joining me. If you'd like to donate to this great network, dollar sign McGangie, 129 Cash App. Stickers and chats are always welcome to the live stream. Welcome new subs, new viewers. Please check out my extensive library of 5,000 videos in the YouTube queue. You all have a wonderful week. You've been listening to the Vault Excel.